This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today I'm excited to show you two different processes. One, to measure the CFM of airflow on this running furnace and air conditioning system, and the second process is to determine where an airflow problem is during a low indoor airflow scenario. And so we're going to be using the digital true flow grid from the Energy Conservatory. And so we measure airflow to make sure our gas furnace doesn't overheat or an evaporator coil doesn't freeze due to a lack of airflow. And if you have too much airflow, you could not have enough humidity removed during air conditioning mode. And so it all has to do with energy transfer and electrical efficiency. It's, it's very important to have your airflow match to your air conditioning size. So we're gonna be doing these tests in air conditioning mode. And if you wanna learn about how airflow impacts you checking the refrigerant charge on an air conditioning system, make sure to check out a refrigerant charging a service procedures book. We have a thousand question workbook and also quick reference cards with indicators for troubleshooting. You're gonna need four items for this test. One's an adapter plate, one's the grid, the DG8 or the DG1000, and either a phone or a tablet. The kit comes with multiple adapter plates with various sizes in order to match up with the filter rack of the system. So in this case, you see 16 by 25. Here we have a 16 by 25 adapter plate. And we're gonna put the grid right into this adapter plate because we're gonna be slipping this in during our test. You wanna make sure that you have the TrueFlow app. It's a free app downloaded on your phone or tablet. You're gonna turn both devices on. These are Bluetooth. And so we're going to be uh, using our system airflow, which is our workflow number two. But we first wanna to go to devices. We're going to open our settings, make sure that we have our Bluetooth on. We're gonna add both devices. And then we're gonna go back to measure. Click on our system airflow. This is a furnace and air conditioning system, so we'll select that. We'll select upflow. The cooling capacity in BTUs on the outdoor unit is two tons. So it says enter the cooling capacity in tons, so we just select two. Our air filter location, that's in the filter slot in the duct or cabinet. So you can choose filter grill or maybe there's multiple filter grills in which in that case you will be taking a reading from the largest one and closing off the smaller ones. But in our case, we have our filter slot in the duct or cabinet. Now we're gonna select next. The test instructions say to set the system in air conditioning mode, which is its highest cooling fan speed. And so we're also gonna be taking a static pressure measurement. So in our drawing here, it's telling us to take a static pressure measurement in the supply plenum. Presently, we're set in inches of water column, so inch H2O, and that's where we're gonna take our measurement. Now you can also switch this into reading Pascal's, but let's just leave it in inches of water column. So now we're at the supply plenum above the evaporator coil and you want to use a step bit to draw a small hole in the supply plenum where you can put a duct plug in after you're done. And we're going to attach our static pressure tip. We're on the positive right here and we're going to be sticking this static pressure tip downwards where the airflow is coming from. And now we're going to move down to our filter rack. So we have our filter in here. It doesn't matter if it's a one inch or a four inch, like whatever you have existing in the system, you're going to leave that in during this test and we're gonna turn this on in air conditioning mode. Once this fan turns on, we're gonna then take our measurement on our app. So you wanna let it start up, and we're measuring the static pressure in the supply duct, so we're gonna press our button, take our measurement, and it looks like we're around 0.26 inch water column as our static pressure, which is fairly high. So now that we have that, we're gonna hit continue. And then it says, leave the pressure probe in place. So that's the static pressure tip in the supply. We'll leave that there. We're gonna turn the system off and we're gonna pull out our filter and put in the true flow grid. Now what we wanna do is you wanna have this air in facing where the air is coming in on the return. And we're using this weather stripping right here to seal it up. And so it's tight up against the back. You can see a little lip here, but when we put the door on, it should be pretty much sealed. Now we're gonna turn the system back on in our air conditioning mode. We're gonna take our other measurement. So the object of this is to uh, basically have a correction factor for the difference in the static pressure of the true flow grid versus the filter. And so we'll take our measurement now 
and then it's going to be able to tell us our CFM. It's pretty simple to use. So it's saying that we have 780 CFMs, so workflow complete. So then we can just save, save it. Now we also have this right here, it says no problems detected, its airflow is about average 394 CFMs per ton, you want about 400 CFMs per ton, maybe say 350 to 425 depending on your uh, desired dehumidification uh, during air conditioning mode, but that's how you measure airflow for their CFM and so what I want to do now is we're going to move on to our next step. In order to determine where the location of an airflow problem is and also measure the delivered CFM, we're going to select our option number one and we have a furnace and air conditioning system. We're going to select upflow. We're going to go to cooling capacity. It's still two tons. We're going to hit OK. The air filter location, that's in the cabinet. And then we're going to hit next. Then we're going to hit continue and it's showing us four measurement locations where we need to take static pressure measurements at. So one's in the return right here. Another one is on this side of the filter, so it's going to be able to measure the filter drop. And then our next measurement is going to be in our supply right here, and the next measurement is going to be in the supply plenum above the evaporator coil. And so in this case, with the outdoor unit off, we would be measuring our airflow with a dry coil and if you want to measure it for what the actual CFM delivered is during air conditioning mode, you're going to have to have your outdoor unit on so that you have a wet coil because the static pressure will be different. So here we go. We're going to turn the power on. Now I'm just going to go right through and take all four measurements. So now we need to turn the system off and we're going to replace our air filter. As a reference, we're going to be leaving our probe in the supply plenum. We're going to turn our airflow back on in air conditioning mode. That's our highest fan speed. Let our blower motor turn on, get up to speed, and then we're going to take our measurement. So our workflow is complete. So what it's telling us is that we have 276 CFMs per ton. I'm going to turn this off, by the way. So we have much lower of an airflow than 400 CFMs. So we have 276 CFMs per ton, so we have 551 CFMs for a two-ton system. So that's extremely low. And it's saying that our total external static pressure is 0.911, which is very high. A lot of furnaces are only rated to uh, be able to blow at a high capacity at 0.5 inch of water column. And so you can see right here, you have return plenum pressure. And so it says 0.56. Our filter pressure drop is only 0 0.092, so it's less than 0 0.1 of a, of a filter drop, so that's, that's not bad. Our EVAP coil pressure drop is only 0 0.1, so that's, that's really good as well. And our supply plenum pressure is 0 0.15, and so that's, that's pretty decent. So our problem is that we have high static pressure in the return plenum, and that means that we have a restricted duct, meaning it's too small or something is closed off or maybe the duct has collapsed on itself, maybe you have a flex or something like that, it's collapsed. That's where the problem is. And so wherever you have high static pressure, so the, the problem is going to be upstream of this measurement point because it's saying this measurement point is very high static pressure. And remember, the static pressure is the pressure applied by the blower motor in order to move the airflow through the ductwork. So high static pressure is always an indication that you have a problem at that spot. So if we had high static pressure across the filter, then we would know that this filter is clogged or it's too restrictive 
you know, uh, basically this type of filter that we used right here, what it's doing is it's increasing the surface area in order for the air to pass through it, which is reducing the static pressure while also being able to collect any debris that's flowing through the system and catch it. If you're looking for this TrueFlow grid, the DG8, and also the adapter plates, make sure to check out the links down in the description section below. And also make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, our thousand question workbook, and also quick reference cards, all available at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.